Hi there, uh, wherever you're watching, uh, it's good to be with you uh, today. Um, I'm here with uh, a wonderful, wonderful man of God. Uh, let's hear it for Phil Gray, please, where you are. <laughs> Phil Gray, um, it's great to be with you, bro. Good to be here, mate. And, uh, <laughs> and so the purpose of us being together today is one, to say, man, I've missed you <laughs> and love you. And uh, and if this blooming pandemic was it in the way, I would embrace you like the brother that you are. And uh, and I miss uh, you. And uh, it's so likewise. good to see you. Yeah. And um, uh, for those of uh, for those people watching who don't know who the heck I am or who the heck you are, yeah. should, should we help them out a bit? Yeah. Let's give a bit of introduction. Who is Phil Gray? <laughs> who is, oh, that's that's a deep <laughs> existential question there. <laughs> so yeah, Phil Gray. Uh, I am. 35 years old. I'm married to a beautiful woman called Cassandra Gray. Um, we've got two boys, uh, Caleb and Gideon. Those are good, and strong uh, names. Good Bible My names. Word. Good Bible <laughs> names. Um, I attend New Testament Church of God, Harvest Temple, where I serve on leadership there. And um, I work as a Christian mission coordinator for YMCA Black Country. So that's me, bro. That's really cool. And That's Pete, really cool. <laughs> tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so um, I'm 36 years old, brother. Oh, wow, you're I am me. 36 <laughs> years old. And uh, I'm married to Rachel, uh, who's a wonderful, wonderful woman. She's an incredible person. Uh, I've got two children. Uh, yeah. Joel is 10 and my daughter Naomi is 7. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, for quite a, a long time, I was a, a full-time secondary school teacher uh, but God always put it in our hearts as a couple and then with a group of people to, to, to do a work for God in the promised land of Gornal. If you've never been to Gornal, you want to visit. Indeed, indeed. And, um, and so five years ago, my wife and I and, uh, and a fantastic uh, planting team, we planted Springs Church mm -hmm. in Gornal. And um, yeah, it's, it's been an incredible ride. Mm -hmm. And uh, Phil, tell me about um, the community uh, that you serve uh, what, what's, what's the makeup of, of where you are yeah um but in terms of church yeah? Yeah, yeah so my church is a predominantly black church uh new tea began in 1953 wow. um well it began over here it's got its roots in america church of god and that goes way back into like the 1800s wow. forgive me if i'm wrong i think that's right um and yeah it was actually my grand uncle that began the church over here Why? um and it's kind of i guess as a response of coming over from jamaica the whole windrush generation um we might touch on that a little <laughs> bit later um, but coming over to jamaica coming to england coming to the uk and um obviously worship and uh, ex church experience was very different um you had the real reality back then of racism which some uh, some members faced going into churches wow. you know uh getting in the spirit i don't think the pentecostal wave had fully hit the uk <laughs> uh yet so you know you had these jamaicans coming into churches you know getting in the spirit making up noise and then <laughs> <laughs> you've got all these anglicans and baptists and methodists looking around and thinking what's going on with you um and some of them being asked you know not to return uh, you know, don't come back next week, that kind of thing. Um, but then some of them didn't necessarily experience that racism, but just um, the, the the culture of the churches that they were attending just wasn't mm -hmm. in line with what they experienced back home. Um, and I suppose anything to kind of feel more yeah. at home was, sure. was, was something welcomed. So New Testament Church of God was began. Wow. And um, it, it kind of... I think on the first day they had a meeting in Wolverhampton um, in the morning and then in the afternoon the second church was planted in Handsworth um, and the church just began to spread like wildfire. Wow. Um, and now there's about 122 churches across um, England and Wales. Wow. And um, yes, yeah, so it's a decent movement. At one point it was the largest black-led uh, church yeah. in the UK. But yeah, so uh, yeah, our church in Heathtown is predominantly black, uh, a huge kind of Jamaican Caribbean yeah. uh, influence. Um, but it's interesting, obviously, you've got my generation and the generation behind me coming up that, you know, we're not Jamaicans or we're yeah. not from the Caribbean. Right. Um, so that's an interesting, it's an interesting time for us as a church as well wow. now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And presumably uh, your church congregation uh, reflects the, the, the community at large that surrounds that, that, that church area? Um, we wish, we wish it did, right. um, but right. it, it 
doesn't we we do have um you know some people of different you know different backgrounds and ethnicities and stuff right. like that right but it is uh predominantly black that's not because you know <laughs> do you know what i mean this is the only people we're letting through the door very kingdom minded yeah. right. um but th- there is a strong culture because yeah. of because of how the church came about right. um so the community in heath town yes there's a large black community but it's probably one of the most diverse communities in the UK. Wow. Um, so we've got people from everywhere uh, in his town. At our church, we've got, you know, we've got people from Iran, we've got people from Asia, we've got, but it's it's very uh, minute number. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Phil, you're originally from Willenhall? Yeah. Still yeah. live Willenhall? Yeah. Well, yeah. I kind of, I, I moved out when I got married, <laughs> just literally up the road. <laughs> <laughs> but, I was at the road, but I was in Wolverhampton wow. uh, and just recently moved back uh, yeah. to Willenall. That's so, cool. Yeah. Uh, I ask uh, <laughs> just because uh, for the accuracy of my next statement, we are both lads who are black country born, black yeah. country bred. Black country, are we? Indeed, <laughs> indeed, mate, indeed. And so where, where we're filming this today, we're, we're at Hope House in, in Gorn, which is our community HQ. And yeah. And um, and the the community that I'm in uh, here in Gornal, Gornal mm. is just a mile away from Dudley Town Centre, yeah. and so Dudley is a as, as a borough. Most people watching will know is is incredibly multicultural, multi ethnic, and and uh, and yet just a mile away here in Gornal, we're in a community that is predominantly white, mm. um, and uh, and the percentage of other ethnic minorities is very very small. Yeah, and um, and so uh, our, our church, Springs Church, I, I would say is 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 quite reflective of, mm. of the community that, that yeah. we're in. So again, majority white. Mm-hmm. Um, not that it's a, a white church. Yeah. Uh, again, kingdom minded, and um, and we're excited to say that actually there there are, there are a number of people of different backgrounds who are starting yeah. to come through the doors, um, and that's exciting. Yeah. And um, and uh, I think it's important for anyone watching to understand our context mm. and. Um, and uh, we, it turns out that we've been acquainted for like 15, 16, 17 yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, but really our friendship, our relationship picked up um, kind of towards the end of 2019 when mm. we ended up uh, being part of the worship team um, for the, the Together 2020 event. Yeah. And, uh, and I've got to say, uh, that was one of the highlights of my life. <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah. to, to lead worship with you as Hopefully. well <laughs> and uh, i remember you know when we were in that band practice and we mm. were doing um people call together <laughs> right and it's just yeah. like that's a moment <laughs> you're not leading it i'm not leading it we're singing that together and yeah. it was like come on and that was fun that yeah was fun. yeah yeah and uh, it was such a moment and um and as far as i'm concerned uh, we've hit it off man and yeah, yeah. And, and we've yeah. been we've been friends and um and so the reason for this this recorded conversation today is just to to, to let you in on a conversation that is happening between two leaders from two different churches, from two different parts of the black country, mm. who are leading in different cultures, from different cultures, different um, ethnic backgrounds. And, um, and first of all, uh, Phil, I just, I just want to say again, I love you, mate. <laughs> Absolutely love you, and Likewise, um, brother. And uh, Likewise, it's a, it, it's a privilege to know you. It's a privilege mm. to have been able to sing with you. It's a privilege <laughs> to have led worship with you. And um, and, and I'm always intrigued by why certain people come into your life at certain points of your yeah. life. Yeah. And so we may have may have been very very loosely acquainted for nearly 20 years, but mm. it's only in the last eight months or so yeah. that that God has done something. Um, in us to to, to yeah. be aware of one another yeah, yeah. and and want to journey yeah. together a little bit. I think it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think the f- probably that our first real conversation was probably outside Bethel when we were doing the video promo, right? right? I didn't make the video. I think you did. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk to Tim about that at some <laughs> other point. Um, but yeah, so that was when that's probably like August or something, maybe a bit later on in yeah. the year than that. Yeah. Um, but I remember our conversation. And just, uh, I don't know, I just felt led just to share my heart in regards to a big thing that God has placed on my heart is this whole, uh, I guess, just the the racial divide that we even see in our churches. And we can't kind of (laughs) pretend that it's that it's not there. Um, You know, I don't necessarily think that there's a problem with churches reflecting the communities that they're in. Like your church does that. uh, My church does that to some extent. But then it's um, when it's time to come together. Mm. I think that's where we fall down. 
a little bit and I, I shared with I shared with you Pete didn't I that my desire was just to kind of just to link friends <laughs> do you know what I mean a lot of my friends um that you know aside from work or whatever their actual mates are from the same culture same background sure. and sure. just kind of like what would it be like if you know if we connected <laughs> just yeah, as brothers yeah. in the kingdom and i don't know why i shared that on our first conversation <laughs> uh, but just what would it be like if we connected as brothers in the kingdom and then yeah. brought some of our friends along sure. just 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 to hang out and yeah, hopefully yeah. then build relationships and sure. just to break down those sure. those walls and those barriers but i think that's just so important i really believe it's the sure. heart of god absolutely mate and yeah and the, someone said to to me I, last year you know when god looks down at his 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 people he doesn't see tribes mm. he just sees his children mm, mm. it's like yeah that is so true and, yeah and whilst we don't mean anything negative by 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 this wouldn't it be great one day where actually we don't identify as a white church or a yeah. black church <laughs> or an asian church we just identify simply as the church of the living god yeah multicolored yeah. a kaleidoscope of kingdom you know it's like <laughs> come on like this is this, i'm sure that's what it's meant to be yeah yeah i, I think this is it i think I, in our conversation yesterday we've been talking all week pretty much haven't we um but i i think for me just the kind of fresh revelation revelation i guess of what church is do you know what i mean uh, what we call church our local church they're not really church they're houses <laughs> yeah, exactly. do you know what i mean they're yeah. like an extended home group right. um you know when i go home my wife's black my kids are black <laughs> yeah. it, it just is what it is i don't go home and think oh we need to get more white people in this family do you know <laughs> we need to we need to get more a asian kids in this family um it it just is what it is and it's normal but then there's a there's a point at which yeah. where my family yeah. can integrate with your family right. and i think on a church level it's yeah. like when when it's time for the houses to connect yeah. and to become the church of Gor the church in gornal yeah or the church in Wolverhampton, yeah. that it's that we don't kind of operate by those divides, that right. the unity that we have in Christ, yeah. that's when we see that coming together yeah. and that, that beauty, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, it's, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Phil, um, uh, before we crack on with the next part of the conversation, I just want to put the caveat in that whatever we say in the next, I don't know, 20 yeah. minutes, half an hour, whatever yeah. it is, like, we 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 don't claim to represent entire communities yeah, yeah. we don't come together no. we don't uh, represent in two different <laughs> communities and and whatever we talk about right now it's a it's an open conversation and yeah. i'm sure there'll be things that that maybe we discuss that that are up for debate and, and maybe ruffle a few feathers or hmm. or actually hopefully bring a lot of peace to people yeah um but uh but Phil, I I I want to I want to hear you. I want to I want to mm. I want to receive you mm -hmm. uh, as a brother. I want to receive and understand your experiences as a black man from a black community. And mm. and uh, I know you want to understand uh, me yeah. and, and where I'm coming from as a yeah, white man definitely. from from a white background. And then um, mm. we've got so much to learn from each other. Yeah. And um, mate, I I I I can sympathise. Mm -hmm. I know I cannot fully empathize mm. with the hurt and the open wound that mm. seems to be far uh, more open at the moment. And that mm. the last the last few weeks have just been monumental across the world. And mm. uh, I just want to just let people know that uh, in private, um, when the when the, the murder of George Floyd um, came out uh, a couple of weeks back, um, you, you posted something on, on on social media which was just so powerful and so um, humble and yet trying to make sure that people are grounded in, mm. in God mm. without flying off the handle mm. here. And, um, and I was so impressed and, I, and I, I text you and I just said, Phil, I love you, mate, and I'm, I'm here for you. If you want to yeah. talk, if you want to rant, if you want to yeah. sound off like I'll be your man if, if that's what you yeah, need. Yeah. And, yeah. And, um, I, and, and it was a genuine, heartfelt message mm. And what came back from you mm. was a message about that long on my phone. <laughs> which <about> three messages. <laughs> yeah. Um, which um, was so graceful in, it, mm. in its retort. So, so helpful. Mm. Um, but also what you, what you wrote to me um, made me very aware of my inhibitions mm. and my lack of understanding. Um, and you basically... You, bas you basically challenged me to stand up and, and mm -hmm. we'll say something, Pete. Mm. 
mm. do something. Mm. And um, and so I did. Mm. And that thing that I put out on social media after <laughs> your text message took me two and a half to three hours to put together <laughs> because I felt so unqualified. Yeah. I felt so nervous to say the wrong thing. Mm. Um, I felt so nervous to, to be unintentionally politically incorrect mm. do you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and um but i put it out and um and uh phil why why did you why did you challenge me mate like why why did you put that back in my yeah. court because yeah. i so appreciate the yeah. fact you did you know it was, it was difficult it was difficult i think um when i wrote that message on on facebook you know i wrote this kind of i know this theological <laughs> <laughs> perspective of yeah. how we as christians should react to what's going on now and how it's yeah. Basically, it's it's the groaning pains of earth, you know, waiting for its redemption, um, yeah, right. and and that it kind of that should focus our kind of gospel, our kingdom outlet to just grab as many people as we can yeah. with us to the kingdom. Um, but I signed it off like this is from an angry ba black man, mm -hmm. um, and often that's just a cliche term, isn't sure, it, that people yeah. uh, use? You know, uh, if, if you're if you're a black guy. And and you kind of you know saying what you feel, you're angry. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes if you're a white guy, oh that that guy's passionate. <laughs> you know we we have the we have these disparities. Yeah. Um, but the reason why I felt like I needed to even say that is because one I was angry <laughs> is yeah. a fact. Yeah. But I think two, when coming with a, a, a gospel apologetic at that point. I think a lot of the people, uh, a lot of my friends, people in my community, be like, "Phil, why are you talking like that now?" Do you know what I mean? We we we're angry, we're hurt, we're grieving. Like, why are you trying to uh, shift that focus um, right now? And I think it, for me, it was a kind of thing of, I'm writing this, and this is my perspective, and this is the truth that I believe. But I'm still I'm hurting just as much as you. Uh, and so when you text me, it was like, for, it was like, wow, you know, thanks. Do you know what I mean? And genuinely really feeling thankful. But I think I waited pretty much most of the day before I texted you back. Yeah. And because, um, to be honest, it was like, I think it was that morning that I'd seen the video, or maybe the morning before that I'd seen the video. Yeah. And um, I was, looking back, I was traumatized. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you wake up in the morning, kind of have your little, you know, your prayer time, your time with God. And then for me, I know I'm, I'm, I need to get more saved. But <laughs> <laughs> the next thing that I do is just jump on my socials and I jumped on Twitter. Um, and the first thing that I saw was it was George Floyd lying there. Yeah. And, you know, from, to me, yeah. I know they say he died later on, whatever. But to me, I saw the corpse of a dead man yeah. um, under the knee of a, a police officer. Horrific. So it was, it was traumatic. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. when you sent that text, it was like, wow, OK, you know, totally but i wasn't ready to talk no, and, you and and i said to you you know what i can't even talk right now <laughs> yeah. and maybe we maybe we can talk yeah. later on in the week yeah um and but like it was it was that sense of i'd given it that time and i was like pete sent me this message and he's saying you know what can i do and i just looked at it again and i was like you know what <laughs> if i can be so brazen as to challenge you yeah this is what i'd say yeah and then just a the whole leap of <laughs> like <laughs> i guess all my emotions and my thoughts on the yeah. situation just came out yeah. um i think i shared the names with you of m multiple uh, yeah. uh black people in america that yeah. have been murdered yeah. uh, by police or yeah. other means yeah. and um yeah just just brought that challenge so it was it was difficult for me yeah to enter into that conversation of course it's strange as as a black person you kind of experience racism it's not like it's not something that every day i'm 100 percent aware of and do you know what i mean yeah. but there are little things that happen but because in the uk because they're so little um it's like if you bring it up it's almost like you're the one causing trouble or you're the one making an issue of something right. um so i was like no i don't do i really want to make an issue yeah. of this <laughs> but then it's like actually yeah we need to make an issue of this. Yeah. And so I, I opened a door mm -hmm. for you to enter into yeah. enter into the suffering that I was feeling. Yeah. Um, and out of that, you didn't just hear, but you acted. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just so, that's Jesus. Do you know what I mean? Like the bi how often does the Bible say Jesus then being moved with compassion for the multitude then went out and, and healed. And, and that's what compassion is. It's to, yeah. to feel it in the gut. 
um, and to get alongside and to get in the midst of it with people. And I, I really appreciate that you that you did that. Yeah. So yeah, man. Way, way, yeah. way. I Phil, I gotta be honest. Like, uh, it the y- your message it, it it cut me open my heart up. You know, mm. and uh, you shared me, with me the the Greek for compassion <laughs> is to is yeah. to have your stomach turned. Is mm. for your guts to be hit and to be affected and you can't ignore and Mm. and that that has been such a helpful thing that you've that you've taught me and um i'll be honest mate and i know for a number of the leaders in our church like for for the week 10 days you know i I reckon i cried twice three times a day Mm. over this george floyd situation and Mm. there's all sorts of different interpretations that are out right now about his character and his demeanor and all Mm. the rest of it and there's some really good arguments mm. for and against the different narratives that are coming out. But my gosh, we witnessed a man being murdered on the street. Man, thanks so much for sharing heart. I just want to take it like maybe a little bit deeper, maybe mm. um, open our eyes a little bit further um, to a few things. The, the, the situation uh, arising from George Floyd's murder served as a catalyst, hasn't it, mate, to open up... Um, open up a wound that was already there but make it even wider deeper or maybe even more apparent um um, mate can you can you help me understand can you help Mm. people from other communities understand what is it about a black man being killed in in a different country in a different context in a in a different climate Mm -hmm. um what is it about his situation that he's that he's causing her, I know this sounds like a ridiculously shallow question, but I think mm. it's an important one. Oh, yeah. What is it about this particular um, incident? And it's not like it's the first incident. It's mm. not like it's the first um, horrific thing to happen to a member of the black community. Yeah. Um, so what is it about this incident mm. Mm. Um, that, that is hurting? Why, why is the black community in the UK and across the world hurting so much? Can you speak into that yeah. at all? Yeah. And there are no, there are no bad questions. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? If, if we want to learn. Sure. There, there are none, so uh, that's that's what I'd say first. Um, but yeah, I guess as say as we say, we're not speaking on behalf of yeah. groups or whatever. But I can just say for me, um, seeing seeing that guy uh, lying there, seeing seeing George on the floor um, under the under the knee and the weight of that officer. As I say, it's traumatic. Yeah. That's the, that's the first thing. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, as a black person, I'm looking at that guy, and it's someone that, that looks like me. Like you know, he's not my lookalike or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. Um, a person of colour, and I, I guess when you're part of a, when you're in the minority, then um, when you see something happen to somebody that that looks like you, yeah, you automatically relate to that, or sure. do you know what I mean? You, yeah. you kind of bring that in. And for me, it's like that could have been my uncle. Yeah. That that could have been my yeah. cousin. Yeah. That that could be my brother. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so there's all all of those feelings and and thoughts that are going through your head, and there's that real sense of connection. Yeah. Um, but then it's like you're thinking, this is 2020. Yeah. Right. It's 2020. Wow. We're in lockdown. <laughs> you know, we we we're staying in to save lives and protect the NHS like we're doing all that we can yeah. to save life. Yeah. Yet at the same time there's there's this guy, this black guy who's yeah. literally being murdered. Yeah. So then it it pull it does it pulls on everything that you that you've ever experienced. Every negative racial um experience that y- that you've had right yeah and you're just like well why is this still happening why is this happening yeah. to yeah why is this happening to our people sure sure do you know what i mean i yeah. can't remember ever you know l- looking on twitter or facebook and seeing a white guy the, the murdered body of a white guy on the floor in the street right no, and i don't go looking for that i didn't go yeah. looking for this it no, was sure. just there yeah. yeah do you know what i mean yeah um but you just don't see it yeah, but but we see it it's and it's not the first time mm-hmm. that I've seen it for for someone from my from my color, right? And it's um, yeah, it's it's just heartbreaking. Yes, yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, it's crazy. It's hard to find the words to really describe. But sure. I, I, was, yeah. I, was, I was talking to a family member of mine, my sister-in-law, uh, mm -hmm. from a, 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 an Afro-Caribbean um, background. Yeah. And, and uh, I asked a, a similar question. I said, I said, what, what help me understand. Mm. Help me understand. She says, Pete, it's like, so like you just said, it's like I've lost a family member. Mm. Um, and mm. what it does in me, just like you said, Phil, she said, she said, uh, she said, everything that I have experienced and everything I have known my family to experience, those those uh, those memories that are, that we've tried to push to one side and and just stand up strong and keep going, it, mm. it, it brings back um, the sum of all those experiences back to the fore and it becomes raw again. Yeah. And um, and uh, and I didn't detect a lack of grace or a lack of forgiveness for mm. the things that had happened, mm. um, but definitely the scars and the memories yeah. and the hurt. And um, that's really, really, that's really helpful. Yeah. And I think it's as, as much, like you said, you didn't detect any kind of unforgiveness or, or whatever. And, you know, through Christ, thankfully, that we're able to Come do on. that. Yeah. Well. Um, but it's, I guess what it is, is the fact of the fact that this still happens. Yeah. Yeah. There's then no closure. Yeah. yeah. So you can forgive, but every time, every time an incident like this happens. Yeah. It's. It just reminds you that this this is not over. This is still going on. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and this isn't yeah. a discussion about what country is more racist. And and honestly, <laughs> why are you all protesting and kicking off? You've got it so good compared to America. Like that is not what this conversation is about. This mm. is this is actually helping us to remember, to realise, and to and to uh, come back to the fact that injustice is prevalent everywhere yeah. and this particular form of injustice is hot in our hearts and hot in our souls and hot in our minds and hot in the world and on social media and everything yeah. like yeah like we need to understand don't we we need to yeah. we need to grow yeah. together and um yeah 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 and and i think this is it and i think stuff like this i think as a church i think they're there to prod us do you know what i mean yeah um it's we should always be at the forefront yep. of the fight of of justice. God's yep. heart yep. cries for justice. Oh, man. He cr it cries yep. out against yep. injustice. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Uh, God yep. said to Moses, I've heard the cries of my people yeah. Yeah. and I'm come down to wow. deliver them. Wow. You know, God gets involved he does. He does. <laughs> in, in situations of yeah. injustice. Gets into the guts of it. He gets into the guts of it yeah. and then he's moved. Yes. And then right. he moves to act. He's yeah. moved to act and... Yeah. And if we're his hands is, and his feet, right, then we should be the first to yeah. then act and then and then move. Agreed. And if that's not happening, yeah, do you know what I mean? People can say what they want to say about, um, you know, the Black Lives Matter or all of those things, and we yeah. won't get into that as such. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a case of why aren't we leading the charge? Right. It's this is our this is our kingdom mandate. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. To speak out against this stuff, yeah. to release yeah. the, those that are oppressed right. and those that are chained, yeah. to to bind together yeah. to the broken hearted. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that that's 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 what it is. That's what the kingdom looks like. Phil, a few years ago, I was listening to a, a really well respected evangelist preaching, and he he shared this story of a church that was next to the rail tracks where uh, the trains would go uh, from um, places around Europe to take people to concentration camps. And um, and uh, as the trains would come by, they would hear the screams of the people being taken off to concentration camps. And um, the way the church responded on a Sunday morning was to sing as loud as possible to drown out the screams because mm. they didn't want to hear it. Can't have that. Eh? Mm. Can't have that. Mm. And uh, and I don't want to. Mm. I don't want to be that figuratively, mm. metaphorically. Yeah. In reality. I, yeah. God willing, many, many, many years from now, on my deathbed, I want to be able to look back and yeah. be proud of the church yeah. that we were a part of, yeah. and proud of the bride of Christ being what it should be. There's that old, uh, <laughs> old now, old mm. United song mm. um, uh, that talked about, "Lord, let us be the church that You desire." Yeah, yeah, and. Um, uh, I'm keen for that, mate. Like, I, mm. I, I want to live that. I want my children to live yeah. that. I want our children yeah. to live that. You know. Yeah. Okay, mate. So, uh, something that I, I, you've helped bring clarity to me about, um, and perhaps uh, people who might choose to watch this might appreciate some clarity about, is is why is it why is it seen as courageous 
for for someone like me with my colour skin, don't matter what my job is, doesn't matter, mm. you know, how well known I am or or how not well known I am. Mm. Um, a number of my black friends and family and colleagues like yourself have come back and said, look, thank you so much for being courageous for saying what you've said, mm. um, for, for, for taking a stand. And I've got to be honest, Phil, like, like the stuff that I've put out there has felt so innocuous and like a really weak attempt mm. to do or say anything. Um, why are people saying mm. that's courageous? Help me understand why that's, why that's courageous. Cause it, it doesn't feel courageous. It mm. feels the most basic shallow thing to do is to at least say something like, yeah. why are people calling it courageous? What, what have I missed? Yeah. I think for me, and I can only really speak for me, um, I've got, just going to put it in frame it in context of my experience so as you said kind of i'm a willing old boy born and bred um and throughout my school life i was probably yeah i think throughout my whole school life i was the only black boy in my year uh, throughout school i went to secondary school in block switch so you know that's that's the next step but <laughs> um there, there were some uh like dual heritage uh children in my school and in my year, but I was the only kind of uh, black black kid with a black mom, black dad. Um, and it's in the light of this. I was talking to my wife and um, I was thinking about it and I was like, babe, you know, any time that I ever experienced racism or like injustice at school, I never told my parents. Wow. Never told my parents. Wow. Um, and I don't even think I'd entered into those conversations with my schoolmates. And I think... Part of that was, I guess there are some things that happened to me, and um, there's no one did, no one did, kind of come alongside and say, "Hey, that's wrong." Do you know what I mean? It was almost like I could see that my friends, you know, f maybe felt a sense of shame right. in terms of that people are acting like that, yeah. but they didn't feel the courage <laughs> to then speak up and to say something against it right. and maybe that's like stepping out of the the, the group <laughs> do you know what i mean like yeah, right. um right. so i guess in terms of my, my my saying to you that you know it was courageous that you did that it's because i've experienced people not do that and right. and you develop an understanding right. or a, a context as to why they might not do that yeah um and knowing that because of the community that you're in yeah that along the line there's going to be some comeback yeah yeah there's going to be some comeback and, sure. and you've done that and you've stood yeah. um and you've said and i think that's been a lot of a lot of my friends have kind of been saying to their white friends like yeah don't be silent like say something yeah and for me that's that's something that i've never really done before i've never said stand with me in this yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know yeah it's almost like this is a thing that you just have to deal with on your own mm. but actually it's it's gospel, isn't it? Yeah. To say, come alongside me in this and yeah. stand with me in this. Sure. And stand against in this. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Got you. And it's got to be more than words, though, hasn't it? Yeah. Like yeah, the emotion 100%. of this moment, mate. Yeah. Right? And and the the world is kicking off again. Mm. Like, like mm. it would be too easy to burn out. Yeah. Saying all the right stuff with yeah. all the right or wrong emotion right now, and then in a few months' time, just crack on like normal again yeah. it's like we keep talking about a new normal don't we in all sorts of spheres <laughs> of all sorts yeah. of reasons but the reality is um like one of our guys preached on sunday a guy called ben he says he says our new normal as people filled with the holy spirit should be we are people who stand up yeah and um so good and enact equality not just talk about it we've got to move mm. from advocacy to accomplishing mm. some stuff haven't we yeah yeah and um and yeah yeah definitely I mean, Phil, look, like this is not all doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. Like this is horrific and it's injustice. But mm. we are men of faith, yeah, aren't we? And, um, and maybe it's easier for me to say, mm. <laughs> being a white guy. Mm. But Phil, I'm hopeful for the future. Yeah, I'm hopeful because of conversations like this. Yeah, I'm hopeful because of uh, of, of the kingdom of God at work in our area. I feel mm. like, what's your hope, mate? I know, I know you're yeah. you're a man of the word. Like, what's what's God saying? Yeah, and and. You know, I believe in a sovereign God. On, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I believe in whatever happens yeah. on earth. Yeah. God's seen it. God knows it. Right. 
right. um, and is permitted it. And right. we don't always understand that, <sighs> you know. Way. Um, Way. A lot of times we just don't understand it. We don't get it. But what the Bible does tell us is that God works all things according to the counsel of his will, right? Yeah. Um, Romans eight twenty eight. all things mm. work together for all. the good of those that yeah. love the Lord and are yeah. called according to his purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And all of this is part of a bigger narrative. Right. Um, so my hope yeah. here yeah. is that as we begin to challenge people yeah. and we begin to cause people to look into their own hearts, uh-huh. like David says, you yeah. know, Search me, oh God, yeah. and know my heart. I pray, right. see if there's any wicked way in me. Way. And we've all got to have that prayer. Yeah. Black, white, Asian, yeah. like whatever. We've all yeah. got to have that prayer right now. Yeah. Yeah. I really believe that God's bringing us back to that place. Yeah. Search me, God. See if there's any wickedness in me. Sure. And lead me out of that sure. into the way everlasting. Right. And it's and it's when we uh, when we pray that prayer earnestly and we yeah. ask God to do that, He's going to show us some stuff. Yeah. And uh, and yeah. we've got to be able to deal with that. And yeah. it's in dealing with that. Yeah. then we're able to bring about real change. There's, right. there's an extra, there's another level to our witness. There's another level to the gospel that we share. Yeah. Because, do you know what I mean? Because yeah, we're dealing right. with this issue. Sure. And it's sure. like you said, like hopefully our, our children, mm-hmm. when they're in their 30s, yeah. they, won't be, they won't have to be having these conversations. <laughs> yeah. But even if they do, yeah. they're coming from both sides from a greater level of perspective and understanding. Right. Um, so yeah. the kingdom yeah. looks different to what the world looks like yeah, because we've right. humbled ourselves yeah. to be able to have the conversations. Right, right. I, I'm just so aware that w- what we've said today and what's been recorded here is is not a definitive book start or book end. This mm-hmm. is this is this is the middle of the book. This is this is. This is the marathon, isn't it? Yeah. This is this yeah. is the conversation that that we need to have and we need to keep go going on having. And mm. I heard someone say recently that um, you know unity doesn't have to mean uniformity. Yeah. And thank God that's, that's true. That's so good. Yeah. Like I, I don't want you to sound like me. I mm. don't. I don't want to sound like you. I don't. Yeah. I don't want us to you know wear the same clothes. I don't mm. want us to be carbon copies of each other's cultures. Like yeah. the, the 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 beauty of the creation of God mm. is that. We're all made in his image. And in the same way that light, when shining through a prism, is broken up Mm. into just the beauty of the spectrum of colours, then actually, God, we shine on us in a way that we just display you so beautifully. But actually, all those colours come from the one source, you know, and it's just like, wow. And then I'm I'm hopeful, Phil. Mm. I'm hopeful. I like. I've told you in private, I'm happy to say in public, you are an excellent man of God. and, And I... I, I love your humility and I love your strength and um, and like I think you're courageous for for speaking with me. I mean, like I, I, who am I and what can I possibly affect? But yet you would be willing to have that conversation with with me as well. And mm. and then um, I just want to I just want to honour you in in front of in front of our church, Springs Church. I want to honour you um, before Love Black Country. I said before it was an honour serving with you. Uh, at together 2020 and it will be an yeah. honor serving with you again in the future i'm sure and mm. and um phil where do we where do we where do we put the comma not put the full stop yeah. in this conversation where do we put the comma in the conversation right now i think what what you said you know it's it's we've got to go beyond words into action so i guess the the comma that i'd leave us with in this conversation is continue have the conversation So have the conversation with your peers, uh, your spheres, your people groups. You know, there'll be people that you'll you'll be talking to that I'll I'll never meet. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Um, And vice versa. So have the conversations. Have the conversations with your children as well. It's, you know, this isn't something that we can just shield them from and pretend that it doesn't exist because that actually perpetuates the problem rather than deals with it. You know, if you're sick, you've got to first say to the doctor, doctor, I'm feeling this pain and I'm feeling this to be treated. So we've got to do that. And then we've got to educate ourselves. You know, sometimes and sometimes, especially in issues like this, it can be difficult because it might mean that we have to uh, read some things that we wouldn't normally read. Watch some watch some documentaries that we wouldn't normally gravitate towards. But it's actually doing the work. Why? Because... I want to be the best brother I can yeah. to, to my brother. I want to be yeah. the best sister that I can. Yeah. I want to be yeah. 
Jesus' hands and feet in the right. best way yeah. that I can to the people around me. Yeah. And, I, and I, I guess that's what I'd say that we need to really be doing yeah. now. Right. Mm. right. Mate, I was just, I reckon perhaps, perhaps we bring this to a close, just praying for one another, shall yeah. we? Yeah. And, um, and for our churches, mm. for our communities. Yeah. But let's be specific, our community, mm -hmm. the church yeah. community, we are one. Yeah. Jesus prayed that we, we would be one, like mm. he and the Father are one. Mm. And um, and so, yeah, um, yeah, let's pray, shall we? Yeah. Father, I, I just, um, I want to thank you for this time. I want to thank you for this man of God. I want to thank you for... Uh, for the community he's from, from the church that he's from. And Father, I pray that you pour out your blessing, Father, on him and his family and, 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 and his community, on his church, Lord God. Father, I want to thank you for his voice. I want to thank you for, for, for his calling and for his anointing. And Father, I just pray, God, that the, that the black community of the UK would be, would be healed and would be whole and, and would be loved and lifted up and know that they are enough Mm. alongside the the, um, the 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 white community the asian community all the different communities that we have in the uk father we mm. pray for a day father where racism is so abhorrent to every person who calls mm. this nation its home that father that father it would be, it would be like heaven on earth by the way of relationship and love for one another regardless of of background and culture and creed lord jesus father i want to thank you that day is coming that your kingdom is moving so mm. so powerfully in our nation thank you for raising this to our attention at this time mm. in this very emotional difficult time that we're in in our world's history mm. god i pray that these days would be a catalyst for your glory yes lord and for the love of god to be poured out on the earth like never before mm. come lord in your name mm. bless you jesus thank you lord thank you father Lord, I just thank you that we're able to have this conversation today. Yeah. And I thank you that while we've been talking, that you've been right here with us, yeah. Lord. And uh, yeah, just as you are with those that are hurting right now, those that are grieving, um, those that are really feeling the weight of this. Lord, I thank you that you see every tear, that you hear every cry. Lord, and uh, yeah, I pray, God, that you would just give us the heart to be your hands and feet, Lord God, to be moved with that compassion, to enter into that compassion, and then to be moved into action with that compassion, to touch lives and to just show you, show you off to people who don't know you. Lord, I pray for uh, the church here at Springs. I pray for the church across the black country. Lord, I pray, God, that you would cause us to pray that prayer, Lord, to search us, and to see if there's anything in us that doesn't look like you. Lord, and let us confront it. Let us not just uh, put it to the back of our minds, but let us confront it and confront it by your Holy Spirit, confront it by your word and just present our hearts before you and say, God, change me, transform me as only you can. Lord, I pray for Pete. I thank you for his courage and his humility in all that you're uh, doing in him and through him and through the church here in Gornal. Lord, I pray, God, that the church once again would just lift up that banner, Lord, that all men would see, Lord, yeah. through our love for one another, Lord, that they would see that as a witness yeah. to the truth and the person of Jesus Christ, that there's love, that there's compassion, that there's healing, yes, Lord. Lord, that truth is spoken in this place. Yeah. Lord, let it be here, let it be uh, at Harvest Temple, let it be across the church, across the black country, yes, across Lord. this nation, and yes, across God. the world. Yes, God. Lord, let you be lifted up and men see what's happening in your church and turn to you and glorify you. Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, bro. Bless you, mate. Love you very much. <laughs> Likewise. And so uh, good. <laughs> whoever you are watching thank you so much for being with us taking the time mm. um, perhaps to learn to uh, understand a little bit more um, from different points of view and what's going on in the world right now so God bless you thanks for being a part of this God bless bye bye